My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about championing hemp's use and bringing it into the mainstream conscience. So, click on the subscribe button and press the bell notification next to it for the latest uploads. So, are we reaching peak cotton? Peak cotton is a similar theory or similar concept to um, peak oil, where we're reaching the point of like law of diminishing returns, where the energy return on investment per like land on oil is starting to curve off. So we're getting you know starting to get less return on energy for amount of for amount of input. You know, it take it's costing us more and more to get the same amount of energy or barrels of oil. But are we hitting that with peak cotton? And peak cotton is essentially saying that as an economy develops, you know, nations creates a middle class and stuff like that. Um, the consumption of um, textiles for clothing and the consumption of meat for food increases. I remember in Bulgaria, in the uh, like, well, don't, don't remember, but my, my father tells me stories about 80s and the 90s and the 70s and all the rest and 50s and, and the like, where meat was a delicate a, a delicacy. And nowadays, it's quite common to see to find meat in processed meat in one form or another in Bulgaria and in the UK, uh, almost everywhere, and it's still treated as a delicacy because it's still quite expensive, but it's increasingly common, especially here in the UK. Aisles and aisles of meat. People are consuming a lot of meat in processed form. McDonald's. Who knows how many acres of beef they they uh, consume a day, a week, hour, a year, stuff like that. Millions and millions across the UK, across the world, and the Amazon, destroying the rainforest, all that kind of stuff. So as the meat consumption goes up, land dedicated for pasteurization of, well, pasteurization for beef, for cows, chickens, and beyond to grow, increases. So is that having a detrimental effect on the environment, do you think? Some would say, yeah, some would be unsure. But also consider this, that as an economy grows, our, cons our, our textile consumption increases. You go into anywhere like Primark or Walmart, and even Poundland now in the UK, there are more and more, there's more and more space dedicated to clothing. People are selling more and more clothing. And people, especially uh, well, arguably women, buy a lot of clothes every week, every month. I very rarely buy clothes, but women might buy clothes all the time. Shoes, especially all the time. There's always more and more demand, more and more consumption. And so that land is being used for cotton, and that is invariably, as the population rises, the global population is only going to increase in, um, you know, it's going to increase in priority. We need more land for cotton, more land for food to grow, and or get more yield, get more, you know, higher yield, higher yield, use less water per acre, that kind of stuff. So the idea is, because that all that's increasing, and we're reaching the point, arguably we're reaching the point where cotton is going to be quite expensive, or we're going to need a lot more of it, and or continually a lot more of it. We might need to look for a supplement, supplementary harvest or a crop, or an alternative crop. And hemp is a damn good one. Look at hemp yield of for, for just in general, because if you use dual crops, you can use that crop for more than just clothing, but also construction, for example, and for food. So hemp has a yield of really two to 2.5 times greater than that of cotton. So that means is for one acre of hemp, of for cotton for example, it would take roughly two and a half to two acres of cotton to get the same yield. So it's interesting when you look at those kind of numbers. And also that same yield, that same acre, can be used for other things, for food. And that can be processed into, processed into milk. Milk, hemp milk, or hemp shampoo, hemp soap, and other things that are made of hemp. It's interesting. It's interesting because you got, we're going to start looking at these ergonomics or economics of agriculture in the world as population is going to rise. We're talking of, talking about getting 10 billion people by 2030 or 2050, something like that. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of mouths to feed. And some people will say, say, oh, just decrease the population of the earth. Which I, I personally think that's inherently wrong because we had that same mentality around 300 years ago, just before the Industrial Revolution, where mankind's population is regulated by disease and famine and war. And it's like, well, no, because we can overcome that. And we, can, we overcame that for the Industrial Revolution. And I believe we, we can overcome that again. And over the past 50 or so years, the chemical revolution, fertilisers and stuff like that, GMOs did help, 
but I, I, I feel it's slightly, slightly the wrong direction. Very helpful technology, useful to know and to have, but not as effective as an organic approach. That's what human, as mankind, even in the, in the Industrial Revolution, was still very much organic. Fertilisers, I wouldn't, I don't think, would have come along until the late 1800s or mid mid 1800s. Certainly not at the start of the Industrial Revolution in the late 1700s, early to mid 1800s. So these are quite interesting concepts to think about and talk about. Peak cotton, as an economy grows, its consumption for cotton and meat increases. So we need to find an alternative or a supplementary source to meet this demand and this consumption and in theory that demand is only going to go linear or maybe even exponential, probably linear actually as the population increases so every two people are born for every one person that dies mm. not only are we going to get a young population but the chances are they're going to live to the age of 100 every, in the millennial generation one in three of us will live to the age of 100 that is remarkable we're going to, in the next 80 to 70 years we're going to have a record amount of old people in the world. A record amount of um, 100 year olds which has never been seen before. Even today we are seeing a record amount of people turning 75 and 70 and 80 in the world which is unseen before. Are we going to see more of these record breaking things as mankind progresses? Because as mankind develops and grows the generation is standing on the shoulders of giants. As we progress and grow we're reaching unprecedented height and unprecedented success. So that's an interesting thing to consider. Peak cotton, textile and meat consumption is going to increase. So I'm curious then. The question of the day is how often do you buy meat? How often do you consume meat? And how often do you buy new clothes? I don't really eat that much meat these days. Um, certainly not processed meat. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I want to look into do, doing some fasting and some uh, bit of raw food diet just to experiment, see what happens, see how I feel, see how I think. Uh, fasting for I want to try water fasting diet actually, where I eat nothing for say seven days or thirty days, nothing but water. See what happens to the body, see what happens to the mind, see how I feel, see how healthy I am, how much energy. Um, dabble a bit of corn every now and then, Q U O R N, but corn mince is is good, but everything else is a bit eh, not very good. A textile consumption, do I I don't really buy much clothes either. I don't really buy new shoes. I have I mean, the last pair I bought I got was about a month and a half ago. Even before that, I, I don't know, two, three months, four months before that. Ra ra rather rare or infrequent. Clothing though, I don't buy much. I I, I don't get many more clothing, just in general. Not particularly now. No, so I don't consume that much meat and I don't really buy that much more clothing and textiles, but there'll be people like, what about you? That's the question of the day. Some people out there will probably buy new clothes every week. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but we've got to consider the supply chain. We've got to think about the bigger picture. And people will eat meat as well. Again, nothing inherently wrong with that. There's pros and cons to eating meat, having a, a vegetarian diet as opposed to a quote-unquote normal diet or omnivore diet. Uh, and these compared to vegan and fruitarian and all the rest, there's pros and cons. But we've got, we've got to look at the bigger picture. What impact does that have on the supply chain, on agriculture, on the earth? Just think big. Think big is important because mankind is at stake. <laughs> if, pardon the pun. So anyway, that's the question of the day. How much meat do you consume regularly? How, how often? And how much clothing do you consume and buy you know, regularly or such? And click on the subscribe button below. And press the bell notification next to it for the latest uploads. And you'll see me again soon. How cool is that?